Genesis chapter 5, verse 21. And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred sixty and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Up on the screen, you'll see a slide of, uh, this is a picture of my family. We were at Grandfather Mountain in North Carolina. Uh, at that time, it was just me and April and Alathia. And uh, this day was a memorable, memorable day for two reasons. One was that this was the first time Alathia took uh, her first steps on her own. And uh, we were just out there on that little path and we were trying to see if she would walk on her own. She did. Here you can see April was kind of coaxing her along and uh, trying to help her. And then you see Alathia. She's pretty happy about herself, <laughs> uh, taking a few uh, steps on her own. But it was also a memorable day because uh, of the hike we took that day. It was, uh, it was the shortest and easiest hike that they had had. And it was a half a mile. It said easy. And so I said, well, let's take, take this one. And uh, the sign said easy terrain, so we thought we could make it okay. So halfway through, we found that this hike <laughs> was not exactly as easy as it, as it turned out to be, or as they said it would be. We wound up navigating over creeks and through creeks and up embankments. And the whole time, we had to carry a lathia. We were trading her off every few minutes, April and I, and I would have to set Alathia down and help April up an embankment and then toss it, I mean, hand Alathia up to uh, April. And, and uh, it, was, it was pretty, you know, it, was, it, was pretty, it, it wasn't like an intense hike, but it was more than what we had bargained for, especially when you're carrying a little, a little child on your back. But, you know, as we were hiking, it never occurred to, to us that Alathia could have walked that trail. I mean, after all, she had just taken a few steps an hour or so before. So she had proven to us that she could walk, and we should have just let her walk it. <laughs> but the reason it never occurred to us to let her do that is because it would be foolish to think that it would be possible for her to even try that. You see, there's no way that a child that's just learned to walk could hike a half a mile over rugged terrain. You know, we often don't really think a whole lot about walking. We don't think a whole lot about it. We don't give it much thought. But walking does require some skill. And someone who's just learned to take steps on their own isn't very skilled at it. But have you ever thought about walking with God? You know, walking with God is much the same way as walking physically. And, and it's a process. You see, when you first start out, you'll stumble and fall. And you may have to start out by leaning on somebody. And after you take a few steps on your own, you get more confident and you begin to do it better. People many times hear preachers uh, preach about having a walk with God. And when they do, they... They beat themselves up over not having a walk with God or they beat themselves over up over fall, uh, falling at it or failing at it. And the title of my message today is Walking with God. We see a man here who had a testimony of walking with God for over 300 years. And so we see that uh, his, his, his walk with God lasted. Even in the midst of, uh, there, was, there was great apostasy, there was, there was great sinfulness going on about during his time. But even he walked with God. Now, rest assured that tonight, tonight I'm not going to beat you up about your walk with God, but I do want you to have a walk with God. And I want you to be good at it. But I also want you to understand that a walk with God is a process. It's something that you have to learn to do. Now, before I get into the message, you've heard me say this over and over again ad nauseum. I mean, I understand. 
that, that you hear me say it many times. But I want you to I want you to hear it and I want you to apply it in your life. If you're not used to having a walk with God, start by reading one chapter of the Bible every day. Maybe you can start with the book of John. Maybe you can read one psalm a day, but just get in the habit of just reading your Bible every day. And then after you read, you get in, or after you begin doing that, you begin reading one chapter a day in that chapter with a word of prayer. And it doesn't have to be long if you're not used to praying every day. Uh, then, then just spend some time in prayer, just even if it's just a few minutes, thanking God for the Word. Maybe thanking God for speaking to you through His Word. Maybe talking to God about the Word. That's what's called meditation. And then just, uh, just pray. Maybe pray for your family. Just have a short uh, prayer list so that you can pray. And just, just uh, after you've done that for a while, you'll notice that you'll begin to want more and more from God and you'll begin to um, grow more and more each day. And so it starts out just like a baby learning to walk. It starts out with baby steps. And if you're not used to walking with God every day, then start out with baby steps. Now, what does it mean to walk with God? And we'll actually spend this week and, and next week talking about this. Uh, walking with God simply means living in the presence of God. Genesis 17, 1, God told Abraham, walk before me and be thou perfect. Live, walking with God means just living in the presence of God and, and, and living a right life. If you struggle with some area of, your, of sin in your life, then walking with God will help you with that. It's a life regulated by His will, inspired by His Spirit, and devoted to His purpose. It's being completely surrendered to God, and we see that first of all. Walk, walk with God, first of all, implies entire self-surrender. Entire self-surrender. The name Enoch is our person we just looked at today, tonight. He says, and Enoch walked with God. The name Enoch means dedicated. One yielded up to God to be conformed to his mind and will. Enoch was dedicated to God. And so complete surrender brings a complete change of nature. And so he was completely surrendered to the will of God to do what he wanted to do. Enoch was a preacher of righteousness. Enoch, in his day... He actually preached about the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, not the first time, but the second time, the one we're looking forward to. Enoch was a great preacher of God in the midst of a, a, of a bad generation, in the midst of a, a worldly, ungodly society. Enoch preached because he was dedicated to God, and he walked with God because he loved Him. Remember Abraham, we mentioned him. Abraham. God changed his name in Genesis 17, 5. God said, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. Abram means exalted. And God changed his name to Abraham, which means fruitful. You see, when you walk before God and, and uh, you have complete surrender before God, God will change you. God will change your will. You see, as I preached this morning about pride, we, you know, uh, pride ex uh, ex exalts ourselves against God. Pride, what it does is it puts us in a place against God. And so when we learn to walk with God, we humble ourselves and we submit ourselves to His will. There in Genesis 17, 1, we just read this, that God said, Walk thou before me, and be thou perfect. And then in verse 5 that we just mentioned, uh, God changed His name from Abram to Abraham. And so there's a process there that God will change our character. God will change who we are and make us a better person. 
And so God changed Abraham to, for, to go from an exalted person to a fruitful person. He has bowed, the person who walks with God has bowed with his whole heart unto the will of God and his character is transformed. Some people look at Christians and think it would be difficult to surrender your whole life to Christ. But you need to look at it from our standpoint. You need to look at it from like Enoch's standpoint. You see, he had a relationship with God. And that's what a walk with God is. It is a relationship. And see, it's easy to do something for somebody when you have a relationship. Now, like my wife, at, at times she'll ask me to do certain things that I may not necessarily want to do, but, you know, I have a relationship with her, and I want to please her, and I, I want to be a help to her in any way that I can. And sometimes she'll ask me to do something that I don't want to do. A couple of years ago, she uh, there was somebody, a, a friend of ours, getting married, and she wanted us to, she wanted all of us to go to this wedding. I'm not a big fan of weddings, I'm just not. And uh, I was like, well, y'all go and y'all have a great time. She's like, no, I want you to go. I'm like, oh, come on. She's like, no, I want you to go. <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I really didn't want to go. I had no, no, I just didn't care about going. And she said, I want you to go. You know what? I went. You know why I went? Because I have a relationship with her. I want to please her. It's easy to do something for somebody that you love. John 14, 15, God said, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And so if we love God, it's easy for us to submit ourselves to him. And by the way, if you don't love God like you should, it's probably because you're not walking with him. If you don't want to live for Him like you should, it's probably because you're not walking with Him. If you want to love Him more, if you want to obey Him more, then walk with Him. Get up in the morning and spend time in the Word of God and spend time in prayer. And you know what? It doesn't have to stop there. You can spend time in prayer with Him throughout the day. When you have time for break, aren't you open up the Word of God and let God speak to you through His Word? It don't have to be just one time a day. Bible said uh, uh, Enoch walked with God. I believe he walked with God all throughout the day. Psalm 40, verse 8. The psalmist said, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Psalm 143, verse 10. <clears throat> he said, Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me to the land of uprightness. You see, they had a relationship with the Lord and uh, they wanted to do the will of God. So uh, walking with God entails or implies entire self-surrender, but it also implies un unbroken fellowship. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> unbroken fellowship. Amos 3.3 3 says, <coughs> Can two walk together? Except they be agreed. You see, we can't we can't walk with God unless we agree with Him. And so we we must be in agreement with God. And so having a daily walk with God helps keep keep us in fellowship with the Lord. Now, does this mean that you don't see it? That that's not what it means, because sometimes we do. But what it does mean. When you have a walk with the Lord, it means, number one, you'll be less likely to sin. And then number two, when you do sin, you're, you'll be quick to confess it and get it right. You realize immediately when you're walking with God that sin breaks fellowship with the Lord. There's been times in my life, and I'm ashamed to say it, but I'm a sinner just like everybody else, but there's been times in my life where I've come... Uh, you know, listen, I've gotten used to fellowshipping with the Lord every day. And and I can't remember, honestly, I, I'm, I'm just trying to be honest. I'm not trying to brag on myself, but uh, I, I can't remember the last time I missed spending time with the Lord in the morning. I've been doing it for, for years. And so I, I just, I, I've gotten so used to that that that's what I do. But there's been times I've stepped in the prayer room 
and I realized that I've messed up somewhere and it's broken fellowship. Now, does that mean I just not pray that day and go about my business? No. It means that I want to reestablish fellowship with the Lord so I confess my sin to God. I ask Him to cleanse me and to fill me with His Spirit so I can be back in fellowship with Him. You see, when you have fellowship with the Lord, even if you do mess up, then you're just willing to get it right, get it out of your life so that you can get back in fellowship with, with Him. 1 John 1, verses 6 and 7. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. And so, if we're walking with God, we have unbroken fellowship. Psalm 66, 18, you've heard me say this. And the Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. And so God wants to have fellowship with us. He said in Revelation 3, 20, He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. God is standing there and he's knocking at the door and he said, if you let me in, I'll come in and fellowship with you. 1 Corinthians 1, 9, God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Fellowship with the Lord gives us power for service and answer prayer. In the uh, John 15, verses 4 through 7. You can write those down. I'm not going to read all those, but he says that if we abide in him and he in us, then we'll have fruit. And then he said in verse 7, if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will and it shall be done unto you. And so having unbroken fellowship with the Lord empowers us for service and brings fruit in our lives. Paul said that the most important thing to him was to know Christ and have fellowship with Him. Philippians 3, verses 8 through 10. He says, Yea, doubtless, and I count uh, all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, excuse me. The excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dumb. Be found in Him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but of that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is by God, which is of God by faith. And then He says, that I may know Him, and the power of His resurrection, and the fellowship of His sufferings, being made conformable unto His death. In other words, Paul said, hey, everything in this life, I count but dumb so I can know Christ. He said, I want to know Him. In His power. So, uh, walking with God implies entire self-surrender. It implies unbroken fellowship. And then last tonight, it, it implies continual progress. To walk with God means a growing knowledge of Him. There's no standing still with God. The Bible indicates that we are to continue to grow in our faith. Turn over, if you would, please, to... Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. Now, while you're turning over there to 2 Peter chapter 1, I want to read a verse in 1 Peter chapter 2. In verse 2 it says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. And so, Peter was talking to newborn babes in Christ and he said, the way you're going to grow as a Christian is to desire the milk of God's Word. That's the only way to grow. You can't grow just by coming to church, folks. Listen, you can't grow just by coming to church. Coming to church is a great thing. You do grow by coming to church, by the way, but that's not the only way you can grow. I mean, listen, what if I, <laughs> what if I just fed my kids one day a week? Huh? If I just fed my kids one day a week, how do you think? Do you think that they would grow? Not a whole lot. But the thing is, as Christians, they only want to come to church one time a week and expect to grow by that. 
You can't expect to grow as a Christian if all you do is come in here and sit down and expect me to preach to you and think that you're going to grow. Well, that helps, but the thing is, is we've got to be fed every day from God's Word. Look in 2 Peter chapter 1, begin verse 5. And beside this, give all diligence and to your faith virtue. Now, this is talking about growth here. Add to your faith. Okay? So these are things that we're supposed to add. And to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brother kind, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you, and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? He says, if you grow, then they'll make you that you'll never be barren nor unfruitful. In other words, you'll be doing something for God if you're growing. And so you have to add to your faith these things. How do we add to our faith these things? Virtue and knowledge and temperance and patience. We do that through the Word of God. We learn how to add those things to our faith through the Word of God. 2 Peter 3.18 says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians 1.3 says, We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is me, because that your faith groweth exceedingly. 1 Thessalonians 4.10 says, And indeed you do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia, but we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more. Paul had told the Thessalonians, uh, the, those, the Thessalonians, excuse me, he had told them that they're to grow in their faith. And then uh, he said, hey, we have noticed that you've grown in your faith. He said, but I want you to increase more and more. In other words, he said, hey, don't give, don't give up, don't quit, don't let down. Even though you've grown a lot, keep growing. And by the way, that's exactly what Enoch did. He kept, he kept growing. He kept walking with God. It was six, uh, I think he was 65 when, when, he, uh, when he had, uh, was it Methuselah? And, and yeah, here it is, verse 21. And Enoch lived 60 and five years and began Methuselah. In verse 22, and Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. Look at this. 300 years. And begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God and was not for God took him. Now, 300 years. <laughs> you know, we'd be good to get 70, 80 years in, Right? I mean, you know, we're, we're, we'd be pretty, uh, pretty far up there if we got 70, 80 years in. But Enoch walked with God for over 300 years. He never got to a place where he said, all right, I've got it all. I'm good to go. Whenever, God, you take me, I, I've learned as, uh, as much as I'm going to learn. And so whenever you're ready to take me, I'm ready to go. The Bible said he walked with God. And so walking with God is for the rest of our lives, folks. We never stop growing. We never break fellowship with God. We've got to do it until He comes. <clears throat> until He takes us home. And so it's a continual process. And that's exactly what Paul told the Thessalonians. He said, look, you've increased, you've abounded, now about more. And so, maybe you've applied things to your life and you say, well, you look back on your life and you say, well, hey, I'm a, I'm a stronger Christian now than I was a year ago. Praise God. Thank God for that. You may say, I've come a long way. I've grown a lot because I've, I've learned a lot. Praise God. Thank God for that. And now I say, just like Paul, keep on going. About more and more. Keep walking with God. Things you may not have realized are in your life. You know, as you grow, you may come to realize that there may be something in your life you've never dealt with in your life yet. Fears and 
doubts and bitterness. Maybe you have a problem with pride that you haven't noticed before, like I was preaching on this morning. A lot of these things can only be dealt with as you continue to walk with the Lord. Now, as I said in the beginning, I'm not going to beat you up about not having to walk with the Lord, but you need to have one. You need to surrender to His will. You need to have unbroken fellowship with the Lord. And you need to continue to grow with the Lord. Let's walk with God. Let's pray. Father.